Blog Talk Radio. Any OD? Jewish Pride. Today we've got a very special show. We're going to be speaking with the one and only Rabbi Simcha Scholar, the Executive Vice President of Chai Lifeline. Chai Lifeline is an incredible organization. You're going to hear about all the work that it does, uh, both on a local level as well as on an international level in just a moment. Before we get started with the interview and the show today, I just want to play for you a short vi- uh, video clip from uh, their website. And... Um, Hang on. Hello? Yeah, uh, Rabbi, can you just call in the following phone number? Can I give you a number? It's uh, 917-889-8323. Thanks. Okay. There we go. We we do everything live on the show. So uh, we're going to pick it up right now with this video called I Have cancer, and you'll see how heartwarming this video really is. I was originally diagnosed with bone cancer when I was 12, and then when I was 14, um, it came back to my lung. How can this be happening to me? Who can I trust? Who can I turn to? In this time of need. Since 1987, Chai Lifeline's mission has been to restore the light of childhood to children whose innocence ended when life-threatening or lifelong illness was diagnosed. Through programs that address the emotional, social, and financial needs of seriously ill children, their families, and communities, Chai Lifeline restores normalcy to family life and better enables families to withstand the crises and challenges of serious pediatric illness. When I was alone, you were my friends. You helped me believe I'm whole again. You helped us find our way back home. Chai Lifeline, fighting illness with love. Really is a privilege and an honor to be speaking with uh, Rabbi Scholar. Rabbi Scholar, welcome to Jewish Pride. How Good morning. You? Good morning. It really is a, p- a privilege to be on the on your show. I really appreciate that, Rabbi. When we get started, I and mean, there's so much to talk about, and I tell you, 20 minutes is certainly not enough time to go through everything High Lifeline does. But uh, just with a, a quick overview, I guess, of what the organization is and and the work that it does in uh, in America, I guess, or or even internationally. Uh, High Lifeline is today the largest Jewish social service community-based organization in the world dealing with children and their families suffering from crises or, or pediatric illnesses. And through a variety of various different programs, 
we kind of create a safety nest around the family in order for them to maintain the uh, family stability, uh, for them to go through the process of uh, trying to get better from their illnesses. And we address many different parts of the family. Uh, the family, obviously the patient, uh, right. through various different recreational, psychosocial, emotional, financial programs. Um, the entire family, because part of the damage, if you want to call it that, of illness is to siblings and to the parents and to the sure. overall community to sensitize them and to train them and to make them a partner in the healing process because uh, that really um, they really are partners because a child um, you know does need their community, their synagogue, their school uh, in order to maintain a sense of normalcy. Uh, High Lifeline today deals with about um, close to 4,500 families on a daily basis. Wow. Um, unfortunately, we probably uh, record close to 20 new diagnoses a week. That's in our uh, uh, divisions here in the, in the United States. Uh, High Lifeline right. has offices throughout the United States as well as Canada, Europe, and in, and in Israel. And um, we're probably... Uh, best known, even though that's not nearly our uh, most important program, but is for the camps. We have our Camp for Children with Cancer, Camp Simcha, and we have right. a Camp for Children with other types of illnesses, all different types of illnesses, called Camp Simcha Special. Chalafim was really the pioneers in this field uh, to be able to take children uh, who are suffering from some significantly difficult illnesses and create an environment around them to tell them that, uh, you know, you can overcome your disability um, even though you may be handicapped. You can become a full-fledged member of our community even though you may be uh, on a feeding tube. You can, uh, you know, you can look at a disability as a uh, obstacle or just a different ability. So, you know, Chai was really there, thank God, to change the world. I've had the privilege of being here since it's almost its very inception. And it's one of the few organizations uh, left in our global Jewish community that peyote and ponytails meet, you know, side curls and ponytails meet. I mean, you see that clearly in Kemp somehow. <laughs> and right. it's, really, it's really a universal organization uh, that really embraces every member of our community, uh, in its totality, no matter uh, who you are, uh, who you're married to, uh, you know, what synagogue you go to. So it's really uh, the greatest example of Ahava Yisrael that uh, we know of. It's really incredible. So how does one come up with, an, uh, with a concept called Chai Lifeline? Uh, today it's massive, 4,500 people. I, is it something which is one day, you know, you, you, you say we're going to start this organization, that people foresee that it would grow to be this big? I don't it's think anyone. And, yeah, I don't think anyone foresee that it was, it was going to grow that big. I, my background uh, yeah. is for many years I was a synagogue rabbi, and I was a teacher in uh, probably you know the high schools uh, in New York, um, Hebrew right. Academy, the Five Towns, Morocco, and other high schools like that in New York. And my um, background, uh, even though I have a you know degrees in education and. In, uh, other types of degrees. My, my background was basically in community work and Jewish education. Right. And uh, this need came about while I was a rabbi of a synagogue, and uh, I don't think anyone realized how big this was going to become, that it was going to become a worldwide movement. Right. But um, uh, I think probably that's probably the, the best way to you know like to build things, because if you would have if, if we would have made a 25 year plan, I don't think anybody would have went into it. Uh, right. But. Um, that's fine. We even, you know, one of the great rabbis of uh, past, uh, Rabbi um, Shlomo Zalman Arabach, he was a very, very famous rabbi in, in Jerusalem. Uh, sure. A, a unique individual, a person that had, uh, even though he lived in Jerusalem, but he had a unique perspective of the entire world. Uh, a loving person, an embracing person to every every member of our community from any walk of life. And he told me something 20 some odd years ago that resonates in my mind uh, every day. He told me that it's worthwhile to create a worldwide organization just for one person. And 
what I thought when I thought when I when I initially heard that statement, I thought it was kind of strange. Why, why is this rabbi telling me such a strange thing? You know, create a twenty million dollar budget just for one person. That's a pretty expensive lunch. Right. <laughs> but uh, but um, the point is that what he really meant was that as big as you become. And as a movement as you become, and, and this is really what High Life is, it's a movement. It's it's a movement that not only has hundreds of employees, but thousands of volunteers and young people and from all different parts of the community. I mean, there's not a single Jewish community in the world that's not affected by High Lifeline. Um, that every child, every family feels like they're the only one. And that's, that's incredible. Really, and that yes. is really the personality of our organization. It's not. It's not the. It's not an organization that feels that, you know, we're the, we 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 are not the only ones. Chesed to do kindness to the Jewish community is open for everyone. Every everyone can do it. And everyone should do it. Everyone should embrace it. But it, you're talking about a global community here of people that are dealing that want to help children that are in such a precarious situation, children in wheelchairs, children on feeding tubes, children that are suffering, right. undergoing, you know, difficult cancer treatments, courageous children, and 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 we and, and they inspire us to do more. But it's 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 not just about giving them, uh, you know, a, a simple reprieve, a, a trip, or something like that, which is very very important. It's about taking care of the right. family in its totality. Uh, because if the if the you know if the family if the family stays together, and the family functions through this tsunami of pain, right. you know, how, how contemporary that word is today, you know the tsunami right. of pain, then then they're going uh, you know they're going to come out all right. You know, Josh, I I've thank God gone to weddings of kids that have gone to Camp Simcha. I've I've uh, been at. Uh, Brito, uh, you know, of 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 girls that they said that went through cancer treatment that will never have children again. I, 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 children. I, I've 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 officiated at, at at weddings that they said that wow. they will never people never have relationships. So I've, wow. been, I've been to some really really high points of 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 of, of great uh, great moments. Unfortunately, I, you know, I've been to a lot of funerals. I mean, you know, uh, right, has a whole separate division that deals with crisis and. Um, it's probably the only the only thing like it in the world that uh, you know it's a division called Project High that deals exclusively with crisis, people at sudden death, uh, etc. You know, sudden death, illness, dying. You know, wow. children dying from illness. It's a whole separate division, and it's uh, you know has a full staff of four and also many volunteers. So these are cutting edge programs that we've done. And um, sure. listen, here in, in the southeast of the United States, where uh, you're located, you know. It's been an 18-year incredible journey that uh, thousands of families have been helped, not just in the um, state of Florida, but throughout the Southeast. And it's really been an incredible, uh, an incredible ride. I mean, you know, to see people, to see kids right now. Some of these kids turned turned into adults. Right. It's amazing. Uh, you know, I know. Right. Right now, you can go to. Uh, I guess you have a YouTube page, a High Lifeline YouTube page, and right. there's so many videos on there that. You know, I'm not an emotional person, but I can tell you when I watch these videos, right. you know, there's not enough issues in the in, in in the room right now to 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 prevent you from just getting so so in touch with you know what's going on in the in the videos. Let let me ask you another question, Rabbi. Is it fair to say that High Lifeline right now is really a local organization that there's probably no part of America where someone can't get in touch with you? Yeah, That's that you I, I, I would say that High Lifeline is a local organization. There's no question about it. Uh, in every, it's, uh, let's take a look at, you know, let's just examine Florida for a second, or that, the region, you know, or that region. It's local, there's a full staff, there's an office there, there are local volunteers, right. uh, yes, it's, uh, and the money that is generated and raised because, you know, unfortunately, in order to run these things, you need significant amount of money, stays right. locally, it stays in the, um, in the, in, in, in the local areas, so, uh, you know, we do have national fundraising projects, but but the, but the local fundraising stays in the local area. So yes, it is a it is a local uh, organization, but it also has the benefit of being part of a national and, and an international network, which kind of broadens the resources and the horizons of even the local people. So it has the best of both worlds. It has the local flavor, and yet it right. has the magnanimity and the power of a. Uh, a worldwide network, and that's really one of the greatnesses of our organization. And it's really, um, 
It's, it's, it's been a privilege, actually. It's, it's really been a privilege. It's been a, you know some a lot, a lot of headaches sometimes, but it's been a privilege. <laughs> right. Like, so let me ask you, you. I know you've got something in England right now, and you've got programs in in, in Europe and Canada. Do uh-huh. they come to you to start these programs, or do you call? Do you contact people overseas? Like, how does something get started in other parts of the world? Today, if, uh, yeah. T- today they come to us. They come uh, to you years now. ago wow. they didn't. Uh, years ago, obviously, we we would go to them. Um, but today they come to us. Antwerp came to us. England came to us. Now there, um, this there's uh, a movement to open up something in South Africa, uh, wow. and Australia. Um, so hopefully after um, after Passover we're going to do something in, in South Africa. But but uh, now they come to us. Uh, now they come to us because now Chai Plan is a brand name. It's not uh, brand name. It's um, it's something that is identified with professionalism. It's identified with responsibility it's identified with with you know with professional care it's uh, you know it's identified with embracing the Jewish community in the traditional sense of um of love and uh, acceptance uh, of you know of all Jews and uh, and it's um you know so it's uh, we actually cannot deal That's great. we we can't deal with the amount of um influx of new uh, patients and new regions that want to know the know the need of services. Uh, the resources wow. are are you know are very uh, scarce today, and um, it's a, it's a difficult challenge. Uh, but we you know, we try to forge forward, but it's a difficult challenge. Have you been hit by the economy at all? Do you feel uh, you know that 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 uh, it's you know, Things have just gotten a little tougher over the last two, three years. Have you had to size down at all, or, or you've been able to maintain everything? It's just been no. Tougher. We 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 did we we sized down close to twenty percent. Really? Wow. We sized down twenty percent, and we're waiting for that person on in in your radio world to give us the call. Say, Rabbi, here's they will. Uh, here's, here's, <laughs> here's, here's, here's that check. I want to send you know right. another fifty kids to camp. Some for kids with cancer that could never be able to to go. Here's a uh, you know here's the check. It costs ten thousand dollars a kid. Here, here it is. Here's those, you know, you know. Here's a check, and we want to be able to. You know, I'm sure there's somebody out there. I'm sure there's just I'm sure, wonderful I want person that wants sure to make a difference. <laughs> and if there's someone out there that really, you know, that says, "Listen, I don't have the money, but go spread the word." I think the beauty of this type of radio show is that you just send the link out to a friend. You say, "Someone, I know someone that cares about children," and you just let them know about an organization like High Lifeline. Let me ask you another question. You, you know, you mentioned again there's professionals in each one of the different uh, regions. Uh, is there room for volunteers, people that just want to just want to help out? They have time on their hands, and they would just love to to commit some hours to the organization. How does sure. one get involved? Like, sure, the, yeah. the the backbone of High Life Fund is the volunteers. The without without the thousands of volunteers that we have, we would not be able to function. So there's not only there is is there a need, but it's the it's the it's the soul of the whole organization. So wow. I, I so encourage every- those in your radio world to right. uh, call up our office and to, um, uh, you know, examine these uh, opportunities. That's uh, amazing. Cause it, it, all you have to do is just go to the website, High Lifeline, C-H-A-I, highlifeline.org. You can click on a map. It's got a list of every one of the regions in America as well as all over the world. It's got local phone numbers. And you can get in touch with any of the any of the directors of any of the regions, and I'm sure they've got things for you to do. I mean, there's so much that needs to be done. But, um, you know, I guess what – go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm just I'm – just, I mean, I'm listening to your passion and appeal no. for our volunteers, <laughs> so which is very, very important. Right. Let, let me ask you another question. As far as – you know, you mentioned the, the, some of the programs, which obviously do cost a lot of money. Is that because they it subsidizes the programs – for the for the for the people that want to attend the programs to make it less expensive for them, what's the charge to families that you know that, that have a kid that unfortunately is going through an illness? Do they have to, is, you know, is, is it uh, less expensive than a normal program? How does that work? Well, there is no charge, first of all, because we don't want no charge, no Nothing. charge. Everything is free of charge because we don't want any obstacles to be in the way for families to participate because. Uh, when you know, let's take a child with cancer. You know, uh, the, the average family is is not used to taking. They're used to giving, actually. You know, they give charity. They do good things. Uh, but when you have a sick child, it kind of creates a turmoil in the family. It totally upsets the whole normal family functions, both on a 
familiar level and both on an economic level. Um, and now they have to take. They're not used to taking. And they need to take because in order for them to function, they need the social worker to be able to help them. They need the case manager to be able to guide them. They need the uh, tutors to be able to help the kid keep up, um, you know, the pace in school. They need the camps to be able to give the kid a total, uh, you know, child experience. They need all the different programs of High Lifeline. Uh, and they, the, but they're afraid to take. So when we right. come there and we offer it to them, uh, it takes away at least one of the obstacles. Now, these programs are not just um, programs that are done with any normal quote-unquote child. These programs have to be very, very highly staffed, staffed to a patient ratio. They need medical right. supervision. They need a lot of pre-planning. They need a very a, a lot of detail in terms of what the outcomes are. So, uh, you know, it costs... Uh, Double or triple the amount of money just of the of, you know of the entrance fee. You know we, we can take a kid to sure. Disney World, but it's not just the entrance fee. It's the doctors. It's the it's the it's the staff. It's the ancillary staff. It's uh, everything that you know that goes with it. So it's a very very uh, expensive endeavor. Uh, but the key here, of course, is that you know it's not it's not a matter of making a kid happy. It's a matter of making sure that they're happy in a safe environment. Uh, and, and that's really the key. It's, there's no, there's, you know, anybody can take a kid on a trip. Uh, right. and, and, you know, that's okay. That, and that's beautiful. But to make sure they're safe on the trip, especially a kid that's on a respirator or a kid that's on, undergoing chemotherapy, that takes a lot of skill. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure nobody wants to be treated by by a doctor without a degree. <laughs> right, I'm exactly. sure nobody wants to go into a hospital that doesn't have maintain safety measures. So, so the, the the point is that that all these things cost a lot of money because they need you know they need really a lot of extra care, extra planning, uh, and and extra detail. And we're able to do this stuff. Uh, actually, we're able to do this stuff almost uh, 20 events a month uh, in various different ways. Uh, you know, for you know literally hundreds if not thousands of participants on a, you know, on a monthly basis. So it's really a, it's really an incredible thing. And, and I think volunteers actually are able to get involved in this and really see it on a, you know, on a hands-on level and, and see how the, the planning takes place and how the, uh, you know, how the whole energy is. I mean, you, you know, you walk into Camp Simcha, which is a camp for children with cancer, as I said before, Camp Simcha right. Special, which is a camp for children with other types of illnesses. And you see the detail that goes into that and the, and the love and the, uh, and the the and the passion of the of the counselors and the incredible expertise of the medical staff and the magnificent medical facility that we have and the other the other types of facilities it's it's a, just an unbelievable thing to see that the kids that are so compromised and so ill to be able to smile and act like normal kids it's really a, it's really a fantastic thing and actually it's, it's one of the most amazing. coveted uh, positions in the in our community that to become a staff member there. Hundreds it's not apply. easy because it's such a, such a big waiting list, right? There's so uh, many kids that want to apply. Hundreds, right? You know, especially at this time of year, they send out the acceptances and the wait list and the rejections of the counselors. Right. Everybody just got, goes out of town for two days. Nobody wants to. No. <laughs> <laughs> to deal with phone calls, but uh, <laughs> right, right. It's really, it's well, there's really, one thing. Yeah. It's, it's really yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a privilege. For, it's a privilege to for our community that so many young men and women want to um, do this, and it's really it says a, it says a lot about our community. It says a lot about our schools. It says a lot about our synagogues. It says, it says a right. lot about our organizations. It says a lot that they've. It says a lot about, about our parents that they've instilled such uh, important ideals. Well, I know locally, High Lifeline has become a household name just because so many different uh, synagogues in South Florida have hosted High Lifeline events, and the schools all do High Lifeline projects. Right. High, High Lifeline Southeast is uh, getting ready for what's called their 18th Legacy of Hope Gala, and this is something which, if you uh, send in something, send in a contribution, or want to be part of this fantastic event, I can guarantee you, you will not be put on a wait list. There's no, <laughs> there's no limit to how much you can give. To an organization like High Lifeline, it's being uh, run by uh, Ellen Weiss, the Southeast Director. You've got Marilyn, Sid, Simone, and Esther. And uh, one of the easiest ways to find out how you can get in touch with this with this event, you can just go to highgala.org. That's C H A I G A L A dot org, and that takes you right to the High Lifeline website. You can also call up the uh, local office at three zero five nine five six nine nine. 
888-888-9890, or just call me. Just email me, and I'll uh, put you in touch with them. It's very easy to get in touch, and uh, it's going to be literally the, the event of the year. Everyone's going to be going. This is March 22nd at the Western Diplomat in Hollywood, and um, I can't wait to be there. I know I'm going to be there, and um, it's going to be a fantastic event. Rabbi, before we go, I just want to know, do you have like, maybe one story, something which, you know, you, you just want to let everyone know maybe about a, about a child or, or a family, you know, maybe a way a family, uh, yeah, who knows, you know, after, after receiving such care, you know, what, what does a family say to High Lifeline? What a family says, I, I, you know, it, it's, there's one, it, what I ask a family to do is whatever, just don't forget when the child gets engaged to send me an invitation to the wedding. Ah, beautiful. And I must yeah. tell you, I was driving one day in upstate New York with my son. We were going to the uh, Hall of Fame. I right. took a, I took something called a day off. It's not a very, very, it's not something that I normally do. A day off with my youngest son. We were driving, actually I was lost, <laughs> driving so yeah. close to me in, the, in upstate New York Right. This is pre GPS. Pre, I had pre, I had a GPS, so I was right. trying to figure out the directions. Anyway, I wasn't very successful. All of a sudden, the phone rings in the car, and uh, it actually was a is it was a, a parent from Florida. So uh, the phone rings. My scholar said, "Yes, this is so and so." Okay, I really uh, so and so from Florida. I, it really didn't resonate with you know, who this person is. So don't you remember me? You know, five years ago you met me actually at a high gala dinner in Florida, and I was a newly my my daughter was newly diagnosed, and she was pale and bald, and the outlook was not was very very grim. And you know, Ellen Weiss and the entire. Southeast office really rallied around this girl and helped her and got them the right medical treatment and the right support system. And the girl went to Camp Simcha and she went to the Disney World trip and she did all the different things of of that High Lifeline has to offer. And the parents went to the retreats, uh, parenting skills, etc., etc., etc. Everything a High Lifeline has to offer. So, my scholar, you told me then, I asked you, how could I repay you? I told you, I told you, just don't forget when she gets engaged to call me up. Mm. So she he calls me up and says, Rabbi Mazel Tov. And I don't know why, you know, I, I, I deal with an awful lot of pain, but I started crying. Wow. Anyway, a couple of months later, we I, I, I went to the wedding. And I was uh, called up to say a blessing, a bracha under the chuppah. And there was hundreds of people there at the wedding, and I'm and I'm up there holding the cup of wine, and I'm looking into the bride's eyes, and she's looking into my eyes. Now I didn't see a bald-headed girl here. I saw this magnificent, beautiful bride. I'm looking at her, and she's looking at me. I close my eyes, and I see that she closed her eyes, and her father closed their eyes. And I see the tears flowing down my eyes, her eyes, and her father's eyes. And only three people in that room knew the journey. That's the power of love. That's the power of high life. Wow. That we can actually overcome these situations with the help of God. And we actually can take what seemingly is a forlong difficult, lost situation. And now this young woman is a mother of children. And, right. uh, that, and that's what we've got to hope and pray for. We have to hope and pray for that every single situation becomes a victory. And that only comes with more and more people getting involved and more and more people uh, rallying to support us and, and these type of situations. And uh, praying and, and praying for the complete recovery of all people and for peace in the world and you know and and just to keep on doing good things the world today uh, you know is full of 
difficult situations, what happened right. in Israel right. or in what's happening in Japan, and uh, you know, right. not not to compare the two, but but they, they're, they're all they're, they're all difficult difficult situations of terrible pain, and we have to rally around and keep on doing good things. Good right. things bring bring good things. Amazing, Rabbi. I want to thank you so much for thank your time, you. and uh, well. best of luck with the the 18th. Legacy of Hope Gala Dinner taking place on March 22nd at the Western Diplomat. Have a great day. We're going to leave everyone with the uh, High Lifeline theme song, and um, it's just an amazing song. Go check out the video. Go check out the website at highlifeline.org, and you will be very impressed. Have a great day, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. What an incredible organization. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the official High Lifeline theme song. This is uh, a video you can check out on YouTube right now. I'm telling you, this song is amazing. Wait till you see the video. You've got all the kids from High Lifeline singing this song. You've got them going to New York City to Times Square. Give me freedom, give me fire. Give me reason, take me higher. See the champions, take the field now. This is amazing. I'm telling you, when I get older, I'll be stronger. This is just a fantastic song, a fantastic organization. I don't know too many people that are doing such good work as High Lifeline is doing with Camp uh, Semso, with Rabbi Scholar. Listen to this. Let me guys see this video. You'll be just so impressed. I mean, these kids are sick and they're just so happy. Give you freedom, give you fire. Champions take the field now. Unify us, make us feel proud. In Camp Limco, and the lifting, and we lose our inhibition. Celebration is around us. Every nation all around us, singing forever young, singing songs underneath the sun. Let's rejoice in the beautiful game. What a beautiful kid. Wow. I tell you, I am so blown away. Let me just tell you something else about High Lifeline. High Lifeline, hope, compassion, care, and joy. What is hope? What is compassion? What is care? And what is joy? Well, let me tell you, this is what High Lifeline says. That's the birthright of every child. And unfortunately, it's stolen by pediatric illness. But again, since 1987, High Lifeline's mission has been to restore the light of childhood to children whose innocence ended when life-threatening or lifelong illness was diagnosed. But as you all heard, High Lifeline is just such an incredible organization that through programs that address the emotional, social, and financial needs of seriously ill children, their families and communities, High Lifeline restores normalcy to family life and better enables families to withstand the crisis and challenges of serious pediatric illness. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Josh Brody. This is Jewish Pride Radio. You can find us every single weekday. Just go to jewishprideradio.com. And uh, I guess we'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget, inspire yourself to inspire others.